Hello everybody, welcome to this amazing game of Dauntless. Today we'll be covering a tutorial for the hammer, and we'll cover how to use the weapon, the various attacks it has, while also tackling a Drask while alone. Here you'll see the command list for the hammer. So we'll take you through this step by step to show you what each combo does. First we have the basic light attack string. This is a series of horizontal swings. They can hit multiple limbs, but are typically slower and weaker than a more focused vertical attack. Then we have the Lunging Strikes, which gives you a bit of forward momentum and deals more damage as they focus on single hits against behemoths. Finally, the Repeating Uppercuts is a variation, starting with a weaker horizontal swing into two stronger uppercuts. This helps swap your attacks mid-combo. The arrows in these combos simply mean to make a directional input as you make the swing. Next is Concussive Aether, heavy for the shotgun blast, heavy attack while sprinting for hammer jump, Double tap heavy for evasive maneuver, and you can also attack while doing a hammer jump and perform a double hammer jump by double tapping your heavy button. You can infuse light attacks with ether to increase your damage per swing. Simply use your light attack, then immediately a heavy attack before the swing actually begins. You can also reload after every swing by simply using the special button at the end of the swing. Infusing and mid-swing reload all consume stamina. Use the special button to begin your reload. The bar on the top left will open and a slider will appear. Failing to press it in the center will cause you to stagger and reload slowly. Additionally, you'll get green ammo that is slightly weaker. Before we hunt the Drask alone, let's look at what we should use the hammer for in a team battle. The hammer is a high stagger weapon. It primarily focuses on knocking behemoths down and allowing allies to capitalize on a weakened foe. You could deal stagger damage to a behemoth by targeting its heads and legs. Once enough stagger damage is accumulated, the behemoth will topple over. You'll know when you're getting close to the threshold by dizzy bubbles that appear around the behemoth's head. While the behemoth is down, you can choose to use horizontal attacks to hit several limbs or focus down with others a single limb using the vertical strong attacks. So I wanted to see what a hammer could do alone against a Drask. I don't play hammer too much, but I learned as much as I could about it in the several times I practiced fighting against this thing. Drask always begins the fight with a lightning blast from his mouth. It's a very wise idea to get to his sides as soon as possible, as that can be a little rough to dodge if you don't know the timing. As long as you are behind him or on his sides, the lightning will not strike you. You can use a double hammer jump to get behind him quickly and avoid the attack. You'll notice I focus the tail a lot, and that's because typically the strategy is to get rid of its tail as soon as possible. Here we're caught in an unsafe location with the lightning shock, and I use a double hammer jump to get to its side as quickly as possible. This kept me safe from the lightning blast itself and allowed me to continue fighting. So let's cover the damage numbers as we hit the various body parts. So we have yellow damage, which is parts damage. This is damage you're dealing to that particular part. Deal enough damage and the part breaks off. When we're hitting the head or legs, you'll notice some blue text appear. That is the stagger damage. Stagger damage is what you need to knock or stun a behemoth for a short period of time. My favorite method to get in is through a hammer jump and an aerial attack. There is a problem if you land on the behemoth or if you have an ally that gets in the way, it does ruin the attack completely, but it is still a worthwhile attack if you can get the accuracy down as the damage from it is equivalent to infusing a light attack. A few other things to note in regards to the damage that we're dealing is that the only damage that applies to the actual overall health of the behemoth is known as basic damage. Parts damage, stagger damage, and wound damage do not apply to this health pool. Therefore, you have to deal basic damage to actually defeat a behemoth. While dealing part damage, it will not reveal you're dealing some basic damage, but you are. That amount is hidden and a bit odd, but from what I've gathered, the hammer deals a very high amount of basic damage along with part damage, whereas other weapons, such as the pike, deal higher parts damage than it does basic damage per hit. So when looking at playing the hammer here, my strategy was to attack and destroy the tail early on. But with the hammer, you can't destroy tails or tusks, I was just playing as I normally would with a pike or other weapon. So here you'll notice that the bubbles and dizziness effect have appeared on the behemoth's head. This means just a bit more stagger damage and he'll fall over. But hitting the tail won't grant stagger damage, it must be legs or head. And there we go fell over and all my allies would normally be able to capitalize it, but it's just me. 
So I start to go for the tail, and like I said, I thought with all the part damage I was doing, the tail would come off eventually. I would be later proven wrong. You'll notice sometimes also the behemoth kind of like sits out on an awkward slope or angle. This is not the best place to fight a behemoth, but as you saw the lightning struck, I jumped down and uh, I got stuck on a hill. And this is when I kind of realized that I needed to back off. I broke his head because his head has a much smaller health pool than his tail. So if you just walk away from behemoth and return to the area you go in, they will eventually walk back up. I haven't seen one that did not do that and again just trying to get as much damage on the tail as possible uh because when i, I normally play war pike and, that, and that's my strategy is to wound and break the tail because when you break the tail off its strategy changes because it loses all of its tail attacks since it does not have one to attack you with it uses its front upper body which is much slower and easier to dodge so entering Berserk mode, Drask kind of increases the rate in which he attacks, and staggering him midway is very beneficial to waste a little bit of that Berserk time and get some free hits. But um, normally you would jump in to attacks one after another after he makes an attack uh, while nor he's standard, but while Berserking, he does make uh, much faster attacks in between and becomes much more dangerous to try to attack during those openings. Anytime you see this goober back up, it is to shock you with lightning, and in berserk mode he shoots three times. Normally he'll focus on one person until that person is dead, but if you have a team and he shoots one person and they die, the other shots will change targets and move drastically. Uh, he has wiped my entire team with a single attack before, as we didn't know originally it would shoot all three of us one at a time, which we thought was hilarious. So overall, when it comes to the hammer and fighting Drask, it's all down to your ability to dodge and maneuver with the hammer. You'll likely only get one or two hits in between, and using hammer jump, you'll get an easy hit after a majority of his attacks while he's in his standard stance. And then while he's enraged, you're going to have a bit harder of a time, but there are attacks which you can capitalize on which are things such as the lightning attack, the full front charge that he makes towards you where he runs forward like he did here. Uh, even in an enraged state, he gets stunned at the end as he has to pick himself up, so you can get a free shot with a hammer jump there. Anytime he roars like that, it's a free hit, guaranteed, all that kind of stuff. And I guess one thing I didn't mention was uh, basic damage is that kind of dark green damage that appears. Um, it does appear if you strike an area that you've broken, so it doesn't show parts damage anymore. It does show the basic damage you're dealing, so you know how much damage you're dealing to this health. Just some other general tips for the hammer that I learned while fighting this Drask was... Uh, you typically want to use the hammer jump or evasive maneuver to dodge the lightning strike. Uh, run towards him with a double hammer and get past him, as I've seen that to be a flawless way to dodge lightning. Even if you are too far away, you can pretty much get behind him from any almost any distance. Um, but if he catches you out in the distance, you can just run to the side and do a double hammer jump to dodge the lightning. Uh, you'll move so fast on the jump itself that it puts you away from where the lightning strikes. It's much easier than trying to do a roll because you move a lot faster and you dodge the overall attack. You do not get invincibility frames during the hammer jump or evasive maneuver. Do keep that in mind, you can still get hit. So as we continue to stagger him again with the bubbles around his head again, that's when you know you really want to focus up on striking him. Uh, the certain parts of his body also get dealt certain amounts of damage. So like the legs get less stagger damage, but the head takes the most. You'll notice if I strike the legs, it's about 200 stagger versus the 500 on um, the head. So if you really want to get those stuns in, you'll be really focusing on head strikes. So we didn't talk about mid-attack interruptions or what the community likes to call boops. Um, that's because I couldn't get it off with the Drask, and uh, he's not the best example to use. But typically, the Concussive Blast, which is just the heavy attack, um, is enough to cause it. But if an enemy is charging at you, like let's say it's the Owl Strike, 
Um, if he's flying at you, use Concussive Blast, it will topple him over and knock him down instantly regardless. Majority of behemoths have a boop or uh, interruptible attack that only takes the ether blast, but finding it can sometimes be hard as the attacks can be difficult to predict the further you go on. Drask is a tier 3 behemoth, so he's kind of getting up there as there's a total of 5 tiers, and the 5th tier is devastatingly hard. Out of all the behemoths I've come across to fight, it seems that the Skarn is the only armored one that uh, the hammer is very effective against. You definitely want to use a hammer against him as you can break the rocky armor right off. But as far as the further monsters go, I, I haven't seen another one that carries armor on him like the others do, but that's up to tier 5, there could be higher behemoths I haven't met as I just finished tier 4 and entered the tier 5 area myself. Just some general tips on Drask himself, he's a pretty difficult behemoth to take on. That's because he doesn't telegraph his attacks nearly as much as everyone else does. When I first began to fight him with my friends, it was really hard to take him out because we got wrecked, hit by everything. And that's because he makes subtle head gestures that tell you what he's going to do. He'll look over to an area for a given amount of time and then actually go for a full body slam on that side. And then um, he'll also just look the other way and lift the tail up very slightly to signify he's going for a full swing of his tail. And then you also have to learn that dodging with the dodge roll, you want to go through him. Do not dodge away from Drask, as his body is flying in that direction. You can use this against majority of the behemoths. As they fling their body at you, you need to dash through them so that they pass through. Since you're invincible during the dodge roll, the body won't land on you as you try to run away from it. It's like watching that movie, Prometheus, where the giant ship is falling down and the girl only has to dodge to the left or the right instead of trying to run straight away from it where it's actually chasing her and eventually crushes her. Um, I thought that was absolutely a great metaphor for what happens when you try to dodge away from something that's throwing its body at you. So this fight gets kind of long, we're going to go ahead and skip the second encounter I had with it because I just can't keep the commentary up for that whole section, but we cut it pretty close with the hammer. So this time instead of using the hammer and prepping it for the hammer jump, I tried the roll, which I timed poorly and took a nasty hit to the face. Remember, every time you run into the Drask, he'll open up with that lightning attack. So be wary, be very cautious. If you cannot dodge it for whatever reason, you can get his attention to start the lightning shot up, and if you have terrain around you, like a cliff or a wall that you can just immediately run behind, uh, he'll shoot it at that and you'll be perfectly safe. It doesn't bend around corners, and you can take advantage of that. As you can see, its damn ta tail is still on there, and uh, still whacking at it. Uh, a lot of this game is just your reflexes to get the damage in and make sure you jump out when danger is coming. Um, there's no way for you to roll out of the animations of attacks for majority of the hammer's attacks, which is very important because a lot of smaller weapons like the pike, sword, and chain blades can all roll out of very light attacks, but not the hammer, but that's because the hammer also deals very quick, high amounts of damage, but it's just the swings themselves are slow, so like for the pike, they gotta get several hits in to do what the hammer can do in a single swing. I should mention the Drask is weak against fire elemental weapons, so that's why I'm using the Charmog uh, hammer. The weapons and armor I took into this are all ones you can achieve before you fight Drask. I wanted to make sure that when I accomplished this, I accomplished it uh, with the viable set of gear that could be available to you by the time you fight Drask yourself. 
And uh, so it was the Charmog Hammer with the Shrike armor set. I chose Shrike simply for its additional invincibility to dodge rolls and stamina regen. Another thing that gets a little rough about this game is just not knowing where the behemoth's health is at. You can wail at it all day, feel like you're not getting anywhere, and then out of the blue, you just take him out and you just didn't break that tail. So that was interesting. A big part of this is I believe that I could have broke more parts of the Drask if I focused on the legs which had more health instead of trying to break the tail which could not be broken by hammer. I still broke the head which gave me a few bits of hide which is fine but you want to focus on breaking as much of the behemoth as possible so make sure that with the hammer you're stunning it and allow your allies to get that break in there thank you all for watching if you like this video and it helped you out let me know in the comments down below let me know if my commentary was good enough for you don't forget to like comment subscribe check out any of my other videos i do do some videos of hunt showdown dauntless and dead by daylight like, comment, subscribe, don't forget that notification bell, and as always, good game.